welcome back to Art Around the World with Mrs. Suarez. I am so excited to announce that this week we are going to be studying art in a new country. So we just finished up studying around the country of Russia and this week we're going to be traveling to the country of Greece. Now, unlike Russia, I've actually been able to visit the country of Greece and I can tell you firsthand that it is a beautiful country filled with beautiful architecture, beautiful buildings, and beautiful art. This week, we're going to specifically be looking at the way ancient Greeks used to design pottery. Do you know what pottery is? Pottery is anything that is made out of clay or ceramics. So we're going to look at the way that the ancient Greek people designed their vases. Our first option is going to be to cut out a perfectly symmetrical vase. I did this using a brown paper bag that I got from a grocery store, so it's not going to be too hard to find the supplies for this. The second option is going to be to design and then color in your own vase. And for our very last option, we are actually going to make our own clay. We know that pottery is working with clay or ceramic, so we're going to actually make our own clay to make our own vases, pots, or bowls. You only need four ingredients that are found in most kitchens so hopefully if you enjoy working with your hands if you enjoy making 3d art option number three is going to be the one for you we're going to uh, make the dough we're going to bake the dough and then we're going to decorate our pottery once it comes out of the oven so those are our three options for how to make greek style vases today stay tuned for option number one for our first option of making a greek vase all you will need for this option is paper, you can choose colored paper or plain paper, and some sort of either marker, pencil, or pen. You can also use crayon, paint, colored pencils to add color. If you just have paper and something to draw with, that's okay, you can keep it really simple. But if you happen to have scissors and glue, you can do a little bit more with this project. So I'm gonna show you the version that uses scissors and glue, but just know if you don't have scissors to cut out your project or glue to glue on extra pieces of your vase, that's okay, you can do the whole project with just paper and some sort of writing utensil. Now, if you don't have colorful paper, but you would like your vase to be a different color other than white, or you only have lined paper, um, I also found this in my recycling. So this is just a brown paper bag grocery bag um, that you can get at most grocery stores. And I'm going to just use this for the outline of my vase. So I'm gonna start, since I'm cutting from a bag, I'm gonna just start cutting this into the shape and size of a regular piece of paper. All right, now that I have my brown paper bag cut out into the same size as a piece of paper. And again, if you don't have a brown paper bag that you wanna use, or you would just prefer to use another color, so some of you might wanna make your vase look like it's golden, so you might wanna use yellow paper. You could just start with a blank canvas of white paper and add your colors when you add your designs. You could go for um, black paper, any kind of paper that you have at home could work. I'm just gonna show you using a recycled um, grocery bag because I think it's something that would be easy for anyone to use or to get. So the first step is going to be folding this in half because I want my vase to look symmetrical. And if I fold my paper in half and then draw half of a vase here, cut it out, when I unfold it, we know that it will be completely symmetrical. Both sides will perfectly match because I cut them at the same time. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about now. So here I've just drawn half of my vase, but I want it to look like with my paper folded in half. Remember to draw the open half, so the part where you want it to open up um, on the edge that is folded together. So I wouldn't want to accidentally do it on this edge where it's not connected. But if you did, you could always tape it together at the end. So once I have this drawn on, and I'm gonna also um, add to our page a template so that you can see different ideas for the shape of your vase. You don't have to do my exact shape. You can look at all of the vase templates and see which one you like the best. Once I have my half of my vase drawn onto my paper, I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so as you can see, I just finished cutting out my vase. And again, I did that while the paper was folded in half so that my vase would be perfectly symmetrical. Remember that symmetrical means when an object looks exactly the same on both sides. So here I have my line of symmetry. So if I was to draw a line or have an invisible line, I would see that both sides of that line of symmetry match up perfectly which again is very easy to do when you fold it in half and cut like that. Now, when I unfold this, 
I clearly, I don't, I have some lines and some marks on this side because that's the side I traced it on and they don't match on this side. So I'm gonna flip mine over and have a nice clean slate. I'm also going to just put, just for your sake, to make it easier for you to see, I'm gonna just slide a black piece of paper under here so that you can clearly see the vase as I'm working on it. The next step that I'm going to do is going to be to add horizontal stripes to my vase and that is to match the style that the Greek vase makers, um, the people would usually paint. Um, again, horizontal kind of sections. They would divide their vase into different sections horizontally and then have different patterns or um, illustrations then painted or drawn onto their vase. If you happen to have different colored paper that you can use to create your stripes, that would be one way of doing it. So if you would like to cut paper um, into stripes and add it, or a very simple way you could do it would be to use some sort of ruler or anything with a straight edge, the edge of a book, um, to line up and to draw your horizontal stripes or your horizontal sections so then you can add your designs to it. Once you finish adding your horizontal stripes, whether you want to cut them out or draw them on, our next step is going to be adding designs and patterns. Very often, Greek people would use geometric shapes to create patterns on their artwork on their vases. So geometric shapes like circles, triangles, squares, rectangles, and diamond or a rhombus, trapezoids, hexagons. Those are just a few examples of geometric shapes that you could use to create your designs and your patterns. All right, now that I have finished my designs on my Greek vase, I'm just going to explain a little bit of what I did because I mentioned before that I wanted to challenge you to use geometric shapes, but I also want to point out it's okay for you to use organic shapes. Remember, we've talked about this in art class before. There are two different kinds of shapes. Geometric, which we see are regular, a lot of times they're man-made, but organic shapes are shapes that we find that naturally occur in nature and they are typically considered irregular, asymmetrical, which means there's not symmetry. And a lot of times they have curvy, a curvy flow to those. So I'm gonna point out on my design where I use geometric shapes and where I chose to use organic shapes. So you can see at the top, I use some triangles that is geometric. I used um, curved arches. Again, those could be considered geometric. All of this is geometric so far. And then I get to these leaves. These are not geometric shapes. These would be considered organic shapes that you'd find out in nature. But I did try to keep my section here symmetrical. So I have one in the center and then I have two that are pretty similar on both sides. They're not perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. Here I have zigzag lines. And then down here again, I wanted to um, show you that you could tell a story on your vase. So here I use the organic shape of waves and I did try to find it, follow a pattern and make all my waves about the same size and shape. And on top of the waves, we see a pattern of uh, these four symmetrical boats um, that are kind of sailing on top of the water. And then just to make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more interesting, underneath the water, I drew these kind of um, mythical sea creatures uh, down here that kind of look like dragons or snakes. And again, I tried to make it symmetrical. So I have one on each side and they're facing each other, facing the center. So this is what I did for my vase. You can design your vase any way that you would like to. But this is option number one. For option number two, for your second option, we are going to just draw our Greek vase and add designs. And all you'll need for this option is a piece of paper, pen, pencil, crayon, something to color it in because we are going to add color to this option. So you can start by drawing your vase freehand. So you could look at the guide sheet of different styles and different shapes of Greek vases and just draw it onto your paper. Or if you want to make it perfectly symmetrical, so you wanna make sure it turns out perfect, you could start by taking a different piece of paper, folding it in half and drawing half of your vase and then cutting it out like we did in the option number one. And then you could use that cutout vase to be your stencil. So this is my vase that I already cut out and I can use this as a stencil on my paper where I trace it so that it's perfectly symmetrical. But you don't have to do that, that's just an option. You could also just draw a vase. And I think I'm going to draw a different style of vase for this option, just so that you can see more than one option. For option one, I had 
drawn and cut out an amphora vase, which you'll see on your different styles of vase vases handout. So this one is called amphora, and you can see that the handles connect to the top or the neck of the vase. Uh, for this one, I did the column crater style, which actually it's a little bit shorter, it's more round, um, but the handles are different. They would just be two handles on the side that you hold it from and uh, they don't actually connect back to the top. So you can draw whatever kind of vase that you want to. The next step is going to be breaking it into the horizontal stripes again and I'm going to just do this using a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you could also use the edge of a book or anything with a nice straight edge that you can trace. Be careful when you are tracing your lines that you hold down whatever you are tracing the lines with very firmly because as you could probably tell I my ruler was wiggling a little bit which made my lines a little bit wavy and that's okay if you don't have perfectly straight lines I don't uh, you can still move forward you don't have to start all over again the next step again is going to be adding either geometric shapes to make a pattern or I'm going to use organic shapes things that I would find in nature and I'm gonna to try to keep it as symmetrical as possible which means if I was to fold this down the middle if I was to cut this in half both sides would pretty much evenly match they would mirror each other um, the images on both sides of my face All right, I finished designing my vase. This time I did more um, storytelling than in my last vase, so I still used some geometric shape patterns, uh, as you can see with my triangles, with my circles. Um, this is kind of like a maze pattern with a one continuous line that almost looks like it forms a square, but doesn't. And then um, I drew some more symbols that were to tell stories. So I have here uh, a, a man riding a horse and facing another man riding a horse. Kind of made this look like a big sunset behind them, so that looks almost like a big sun, so I'll probably color that in yellow. And then over here I have some men with spears and people with spears, uh, and a bull in the middle of them. Uh, and then uh, just some more patterns, some lines um, that repeat, repeating line patterns. And over here I have the leaves on the side on the handles. So you can draw whatever you want to on your vase. And now we're going to color it in. So you can use um, crayons to color in your artwork. You can use watercolor paints if you want to use the markers, um, washable markers with water paint over top of it. Um, that would be another option. But however you want to color this in, you're gonna just color any way that you want to. In ancient Greece, they would have used more natural earth tones for their vase because that was what was more available to them. So their clay, their vase would actually come out looking um, a lot of times a, a deep orange color because of the iron that was in the clay. Um, but browns, yellows, creams, anything that kind of you look out into nature and you see those colors, um, a lot of times those were the colors that they used. But for this project, if you would like to just go wild with your colors, you are absolutely welcome to. You can use any kind of colors you want to, warm colors, cool colors, whatever you think looks best for your picture. Okay, option number two for drawing or painting your vase is now complete. So now we're gonna move on to our last option. For our last option, we are going to make our own bakeable clay. Now this clay is very simple to make. You only need four ingredients and it's really easy to sculpt with and it bakes really well. The first ingredient is one cup of all-purpose flour. So um, just regular baking flour, you're gonna need one cup of that. You're going to need also half a cup of salt two tablespoons of any kind of oil. So I use vegetable oil, but olive oil, coconut oil, any kind of oil that you can use, two tablespoons of that. And then last is just about um, a half a cup of water. You can use a little bit less. I'm gonna start with a third of a cup of water and see how thick my dough is and then maybe add a little bit more if I need to. Mine came out really sticky and it shouldn't look like this. It should definitely be kind of like the consistency of pizza dough. So it should be a little bit harder, more solid. So I think what I need to do is um, use more flour. So I'm going to go get uh, probably a third, a cup of flour extra and add it to here and see if that helps. I had to relocate from my art studio to the kitchen because this was making way too much of a mess. So I definitely suggest if you're going to make your vase using option three, uh, making clay, bakeable clay, definitely do so in your kitchen or in an area that your parents are okay with getting a little bit messy. Once I have my dough and it's ready to form, I'm going to go ahead and roll it out. So I'm going to use for this to roll it out, I'm going to use my rolling pin from my kitchen. 
uh, to roll it out to make it nice and flat. But if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use anything that is a cylinder. So you could use a jar of peanut butter, a can, anything that is a cylinder that you can press down and roll back and forth with your hands, that can work as a rolling pin. There are a few different options you can use for forming your bowl. The first option is to make a pinch pot. So that is done by rolling your dough into a sphere. So I'm going to make a ball of clay. Then I'm going to take my thumbs and push them into the middle of my clay and form a bowl or a vase by squeezing my thumb to my index finger on both hands and just rotating my clay around and around. This is creating a pinch pot. Okay, now this one is not perfectly round, perfectly smooth, but when I bake it, it will turn out to be a small little bowl or a small little vase, however you want to look at it. So you could do it like that if you would like to form it. Another very easy way, if you happen to have any stainless steel cups or bowls, a really easy way you could do this would be to take some clay and put it over your bowl. This makes it really easy to form. And then you're going to just go around that entire stainless steel. Again, it has to be stainless steel. If you're not sure, don't use it because I don't want you to have problems with putting it in the oven, but you're gonna form your clay to that stainless steel bowl and then you can put it in the oven just like this and it will bake and become a bowl that way and the next the last option which is the one i'm gonna probably end up using is using a muffin tin i know that this is safe to go in the oven i don't have to worry about it too much and i'm going to use my clay that we've just made to form a circle inside of here Now that I have my bowls of clay formed and in my cupcake tin, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees and put them in for about 45 minutes. Uh, after 45 minutes, since these ones are smaller, they should be done. If you want to make a larger, bigger bowl, um, then it's gonna probably take up to an hour. So anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour is how long it takes for the dough to actually bake and harden. I'm gonna put these little bowls in for 45 minutes and we'll see how they turn out. After your clay pots, after your clay vases have been baking in the oven for 45 minutes to one hour, depending on how long you wanted them to cook, make sure you have an adult help you and use some sort of oven milk to get them out of the oven and then let them cool for at least 20 minutes before you touch them. Once your vases are all cooled off, you can check out how they turned out. Now mine came out way too thick. Because this clay is really a dough based in flour, it's going to expand as it bakes. So mine came out really, really thick. Um, they actually do look more like a food that you would eat than a vase or a bowl, but you can see the outside came out nice and smooth. The inside has expanded and has become really kind of like lumpy and thick. And I think what would have helped me is if I had another smaller item that was um, safe to put in the oven, if I put that inside, it would give me a nice smooth inside for the bowl. Or really, if you have the stainless steel uh, if you have a stainless steel cup or a bowl that you can put your mold over top of and then um, some kind of rack or stainless steel um, that you can put on the bottom so that the bottom comes out flat because again the dough is going to expand so if you cover this all with dough and then it expands in the oven it's going to have a rounded um, bottom which is going to be wobbly if you want it to be flat you could put a plate against it. I think this is a better option because your bowl will come out looking so much smoother and it's a little bit easier to get the dough thin um, on a, a larger surface like this. It was really hard for me to thin out the dough in a cupcake tin. So if you have this, I think this would make it easier. If you ha have just a cupcake tin that's safe to go in the oven, that could be okay too. I would just definitely suggest making your dough really thin. I was nervous that my dough was going to be too thin and it was going to break or rip, but this is obviously a little bit too thick. If you don't have a stainless steel bowl that you can use to cover with your dough, there are two alternatives that I think will work out better than putting it inside of the muffin tin. You can use tin foil to form the shape. So if I wanted to use this tin foil, I could form, uh, I could ball it up into a ball and then use my clay to cover it. I could make it into the shape of the vase that I wanna do and then cover it with the dough. 
And then this tin foil is completely safe to put in the oven with that clay over top of it and you would just set it on top of a baking sheet, a regular cookie sheet would work fine. Or another alternative to using tin foil, shaping tin foil and then covering that with dough, would be to use your muffin tin upside down. So I can put the dough very thinly over the uh, underside of my muffin tin and then when my bowls come out they'll have a really nice smooth inside of the bowl and again i can shape that however i want to but just remember if you're going to do the muffin tin you might want to put a baking or a cookie sheet on top so that your bowls um while the dough and the clay is expanding in the oven that it still comes out with a flat bottom so that it can rest without being wobbly so that is another alternative and i would definitely suggest instead of putting your dough inside of a muffin tin you should use the bottom bottom of the muffin tin to form around those or if you want to form tin foil into different shapes that way your vase doesn't have to come out so short and shallow like a muffin tin you could make this as large as you want to in any shape that you want to you could make a really big bowl you could make it longer like a cylinder uh, to look more like a flower vase however you want to shape your vase um, this would be a really good option using tin foil then of course you know the tin foil is not going to be completely smooth so the inside of your vase will will be a little textured kind of like crumpled tin foil but the outside you can really smooth and make look beautiful so this is a really good option if you don't happen to have a stainless steel bowl to shape it around this is a great option and I did something with the extra dough I rolled it up into spirals or to teardrop shapes and I used a pencil to poke a hole through it so these could be um, charms to make a necklace out of or you could make you know uh, you could add them as decoration onto something but I'm gonna paint these as well so again acrylic paint is going to work on these not watercolor paint um, this is a clay that is dough based so it's going to be a little bit porous so if you add a lot of water on here it's not gonna it's not gonna absorb the color um so acrylic paint would work or you could use sharpie markers to add decorations but if you don't want to add decorations you can just keep, keep this natural clay color see I can I added some designs on this one using sharpie markers um, it doesn't work perfectly because this clay is really porous so it's really rough there's a lot of like um, little kind of like holes and marks um, where the air has gotten into the clay um, but it does work if you don't have paint and you want to decorate your pot or your bowl your vase with something and you have sharpie markers they do work so I painted this one kind of to look like a flower um, so you can decorate your bowl or vase with paint. Again, I would recommend if you have extra clay, maybe trying to add some little extra things or you could make a necklace out of this. It's kind of a fun way to use the extra clay. And these ones came out really good because they, I think they baked the hardest um, since they're small. So I maybe would recommend for your bowls, leaving them in for a full hour in the oven um, and then smaller items, less time, like 45 minutes. So that is our third option. And we are officially done with our third option to make a Greek style vase. Hopefully you have a chance to watch the video that I posted for you about ancient Greece. This country has a lot of history and actually a lot of things that we have today that we might take for granted, we owe to ancient Greece. So I wanna encourage you to watch that video if you haven't already seen it about the five things you need to know about ancient Greek culture and then get started with your art project. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you have a lot of fun creating your own version of Greek vases that you can either draw, cut, color, or make out of your own clay, homemade clay, these beautiful, beautiful works of art. See you next time.